Hello and welcome back. I'm Colton from Ankeny Van Builds and today we're going to be putting a ceiling into our van as well as our 12 volt uh, puck lights and as always I'm going to show you everything that you're going to need to install those so if you haven't already hit that subscribe button and let's just jump right into it. For the ceiling panels I went with these pine tongue and groove boards. You can see on one side there's a groove on the other side you can see there's a, a tongue to it. That allows the boards to join in together so that there's no gaps and it looks very nice. I'm also going to be staining and sealing these boards up to match the floorboards. So let me show you everything I use to do that. So before staining any of these boards, it's really important that you sand it down. I plan on going down to a 220 grit so it's nice and smooth. So because there's gonna be a lot of sanding, I'm gonna be wearing a mask so I'm not breathing in a bunch of sawdust all day. And then I have this orbital sander, which makes sanding much easier. So before I start staining anything, I'm gonna be using this preconditioner. What that does is it helps even out the amount of stain that gets put onto these pine boards. Because this pine is very porous, if I didn't use this, this stain, when I would go to put it on, would kind of pool up or group up in one area of the board and I can show you some examples here. So this one, I didn't use any pre-stain. So you can see right here, it got a little blotchy. Up top on this ridge, it got darker than the rest of it. Whereas the same exact kind of wood with pre-conditioner, it gives it a nice, smooth, even finish. So the way I'm going to be applying these is just with a simple rag. You you apply it to the wood, then you wait about two to three minutes, you wipe off all the excess, and then you let it dry completely. And then the stains that I'm gonna be using are both from Verithane, Weathered Oak for one of them, and then Provincial for the other, just to make it a little bit darker. After we apply all the stain, we need to seal up all the wood because stain doesn't help protect the wood, it just changes the color of it. So I have clear coat, and I'm gonna be applying it to both the face of it and the back of it. So once all the stain and the clear coats are done drying, we can go ahead and start to install these boards into the van itself. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a nail gun with one inch nails. And just to make it even stronger, I'm gonna use wood glue. And while we are installing all of these with the nail gun, I will be using this drill with a two and a half inch hole saw to make some holes for my 12 volt puck lights that I'm gonna be putting into the ceiling. So with that out of the way, I'm going to mask up and get to sanding. So with all the boards sanded, I'm going to go ahead and start putting on this preconditioner. Uh, it's really important when you start using something new to read the back of the bottle and know exactly how to apply it and what to avoid. One really important consideration that isn't really talked about a lot is when you're using these rags to apply the stain, to soak them in water after you're done using them and to not just wob them up and throw them in a trash can. If you do that, the chemicals in the stains and the oils have a potential of heating up and catching on fire. There's cases of garages burning down because of this reaction. So always soak them in water before you throw them away. That being said, let's go ahead. I'm gonna start mixing my stains. Once this is done drying, I can start applying that stain to the boards and then let it dry. So I just finished staining all these boards. They're done, waiting for them to dry so then I can put a clear coat on it. 
But just for reference, I want you guys to notice this board down here, that is actually one of the floorboards. And I put it up there just for reference so you can see uh, how closely that stain is matched. So I'm pretty happy with how that looks. Okay, so it's been 24 hours since the stain has been applied. So we're ready to put some clear coat on. But let me just show you what I'm doing right now as far as uh, how I'm applying this clear coat. So this is a clear coat that I'm using. It's just this water-based clear coat. I went with satin, so it's not too shiny, but also not too flat. I apply it with just this brush right here. Um, I set these boards up right here so that it's not, the entire board isn't touching the bottom because what I'll do is I'll apply the bottom side first, flip it over, and then I'll put the clear coat on the top and I'm planning on doing two coats of this stuff. Okay, so there we go. All the clear coat is on. And if I'm being honest, putting clear coat on, it takes a very long time and it's kind of monotonous. And it's really not that fun because it doesn't look a whole lot different. But this is definitely not something that you want to overlook or skip because it really does seal and protect the wood and prevents it from cupping and twisting and bending and warping and all of those things. It prevents it, so do not overlook it. ready to go and it's time to finally install this ceiling so let's just jump right into it shiplap walls going up the side the overhead cabinets over here I love the way these recessed lights look so before I wrap up today's video I just want to quickly go over how I wired all of these 12 volt lights and how I got them to work so so coming out of here is our cables from the solar panel which go into the goal zero and that's what's charging it right now from there, I have a cigarette plug that connects into a 12 volt system. It goes into this bus bar. Uh, it's like a fuse block. So when you take this cover off, you can see I have it all wired up so that there's a 15 amp fuse. We got our lights, our max air fan, and a USB wall plug. This is going to be a reading light on this side, and I'll also wire 
like the fridge and the heater and other stuff on this side. So coming from that, it goes into this big bundle of mess and into our light switch. So our light switch just has, on the, on the back side you can see there's an input and an output. I just connected that to the positive and the negative coming from that bus bar and I connect it using these little uh, male and female adapters. Then we got an output, so that goes out this way. And these are all 14 gauge wires. So, right here it's on a dimmer switch. I flip it on, light comes on, and you can dim them, brighten them up. So from here I have a positive and a negative, and I ran that up and all the way around all the way through and around, and I ended it about right here. So with that line going through, I got one of these off of Amazon, and I filmed this in depth while I was doing it, and I realized that the microphone wasn't turned on, so I apologize. But what you do is you get this clip, you run that positive and the negative through one side, and then you feed another cable from the light itself. Actually, I think I can pull one of these out. So you pull this out and you see on this positive lead, you would run that through the hole of this and then with a pair of pliers, this metal clip, you squeeze that in and that's what connects the circuit. And you do that for the positive and the negatives for both of them. And then you just connect the lights using those same spade clips and you have a light. So all in all, putting the ceiling in is about 98% prep work, prep work, prep work, getting all your wires run and the frame framework done, sanding, staining, and then it all comes together when you finally get to put it in, which is super exciting. I'm really happy with how it turned out. And on that, I'm gonna end this video here. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed it, learned something. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any other videos. And I'll see you guys next week.